In this video of First Guitar Chords by Toad Edwarder, guitarteacher.net.nz, we're going to be talking about why, when, how, and how not to learn guitar chords. So why do people learn guitar chords first? Often it's because what their friends know. Often also it's to play along with their own singing, or with their friends singing. Oftentimes why they prefer guitar we're playing chords on guitar over any other instrument, especially single line instruments, maybe like a quarter, is that it makes them sound big, makes them sound like a band. People learn guitar chords first because they're told that chords are easy and that lead guitar is hard and that the good guitar players play lead and so the rest of us play chords. And the last reason why people learn guitar chords first is because it's what their teacher learned first. So when is the best time to learn chords? My experience with teaching children is that after you can play melody, play one note at a time, one finger at a time, you play melody on one string. And then of course you play melody on two strings and play a melody across three strings, so now you've got three string scales. Okay, and now you can go across three strings. Next thing is to be able to play two notes at the same time, right? Two notes at the same time. Then you can play three notes at the same time. All this takes a while to do, and then you can play a melody on four strings of the guitar, right? Then you can play four notes simultaneously. That's a lot of work, right? Getting four, four notes to play simultaneously. Then you can play the melody on five strings. And then after that, you can play, after you can play five notes simultaneously, then that's not a bad time to learn chords. When is the best time for your body to learn chords? No way to think about this is when you can walk two fingers across a string can be one and two, one and three, one and four, and so on. There's lots of different combinations. Then when you can walk three fingers across the string, right? So you start with three fingers on the E string, then you go one, two, three, onto the B string, one, two, three, onto the third string, one, two, three, onto the fourth string, one, two, three, onto the fifth string, one, two, three, onto the sixth string. Then you come back, one, two, three, on the fifth string, one, two, three, on the fourth string, one, two, three, on the third string, one, two, three, on the second string, one, two, three, on the first string. Okay, for a beginner, that is not the easiest thing to do. And so if we can't walk, we won't be able to walk a finger in a line, walk fingers in a line, before we want them to do all this other crazy stuff in chords. Then you walk four fingers across the strings. Then you can pivot your thumb with your fingers still on the strings. Then you can pivot your fingers vertically, going from the first string to, say, the sixth string and back, and all points in between. Or when you can pivot your fingers horizontally, so that your first finger's opposite your thumb, then you pivot and your third finger's opposite your thumb, and you pivot and your first finger's opposite your thumb. And after you can pivot your fingers diagonally. How should you learn chords in the beginning? I recommend the first thing you do is buy the Guitar Principles book by Jamie Andreas. Train your fingers in Guitar Principles. Jamie will walk you through that and that you need to learn each chord very slowly so that you can train relaxation and not tension into each chord. You want to be able to walk into each chord one finger, one fret, and one string at a time. Okay, that's a whole bunch of guitar lessons in itself. Then you want to be able to pose in each chord for two minutes each. Say two minutes each focusing on relaxation and awareness. I suggest to my guitar students that when they're watching TV, that's a good time to do posing. And you want to be able to walk out of a chord, each chord one finger, one fret, and one string at a time. So you want to be able to walk into the chord, you want to be able to pose in the chord, and walk out of the chord. Then at the same time, we want to be learning two string chord forms, right? Chords with two strings in them. 
two notes, that's all. And for a new hand, that's a hip. Then you learn the three string chord forms, the four string chord forms, five string chord forms, six string chord forms. What often happens is that beginners are taught the six string ones first, then the five string, and then the four string, and it's the opposite way that I'm suggesting. Okay, and the basic principle is that it's easier to teach one finger to do something than four, then two, then three, and so on. Okay, so this way we're building up to these big chords. What happens is when you start with the big chords first, your hands are so trained to be so tense that they can't play the five string chords, and then they're so tense they can't play the four string chords, then they're so tense they can't play the three string chords, and they're so tense they can't play the two string chords. So when you're playing six string chords with four fingers, there's a source of a lot of lot of tension there. And if you don't learn how to um, how to detect the tension and how to identify it and then how to work on it and how to fix it, you are going to have all kinds of problems. You're going to have hands that just can't do five string, four string, three string, two string chords and even play one note at a time. When you're doing these two, you need to spend as much time on the finger picking or the picking hand on each chord form. So you're teaching your pick to play two strings. You're teaching your pick to play three strings at the same time as your fretting hands playing three strings. You're teaching your pick to play four strings. You're teaching your pick to play five strings. You're teaching your pick to play six strings. Are you getting the idea that learning chords is actually a lot of work? Then if you're doing finger picking, that's even more work. Finger picking two strings, finger, pick, finger picking three strings, finger picking four strings, and so on. Okay, so just be advised that the amount of time you spend on your fretting hand, you're going to need to spend similar amounts of time on your picking hand, separately, individually, and then bring them together. So how do we change chords in the beginning? extremely slowly you change chords extremely slowly you change chords one finger at a time one finger at a time so you track finger one in one chord moving the finger and where finger one moves into the next chord and you track how each finger moves you do that for each finger then you change two fingers at a time. So let's say we're changing between C and D, for example. You change two fingers at a time, tracking the flight path of each finger individually and as a pair. Then you change three fingers at a time between the chords, tracking the flight path of each finger individually and then each then three fingers as a trio. Then you change four fingers at a time between chords, tracking the flight path of each finger individually and as a quartet. So are you starting to get the idea that a big part of your role when you're learning to change chords it's like traffic control for your fingers. Your fingers do all their changing in the air. They all have to leave at the same time, change at different times in the air, and arrive at the same time. And when you take a look at your fingers, one of the first things you'll notice is that they're all different sizes. So they're going to need to be moving through the same space at different, different speeds. That is tricky. Right? So be prepared to do this extremely slowly in the beginning so that you get control of each finger so that when you're playing, you know, your fingers, you know what your fingers are doing and that when your fingers have had the opportunity to learn the information slowly and fully and confidently and clearly, then they will play the chords for you confidently, clearly, magically, instantly. 
because you have taken the time to walk each finger in each of the combinations between the chords. And so that they're like birds who know exactly where they're going, who know exactly what the other birds are doing, and who can do all their planning in the air and do all their changes in the air. This is extremely important for changing chords in the beginning. What happens if you don't do that? You end up with a handful of nervous, neurotic fingers that don't have the confidence to change chords properly and they cling on to each other and they hang on to the guitar neck for dear life instead of playing the guitar neck with fingertips and thumb tips and being totally confident about what they're doing in the air and on the fingerboard. So how do you not learn chords? Okay, here's the first thing. Do not learn them all in the open position first. Do not learn them all in the open position first. Okay, guess what 99% guitar teachers teach you to do? They teach you to play the chords in the open position first. Silly, silly move. Why do they do it? Because they were taught that way. Is that the best way? No, it's just the way they were taught. Why isn't it the best way? For a great uh, um, explanation of this, I refer you to Jamie Andreas and Guitar Principles. But just be aware that when you're learning in the open position first, that's where your arm has to do the most work and when you're not doing it properly, all you do is end up creating more and more tension in your arm and harder to play guitar and harder to shift and harder to everything. So you don't want to learn chords in the open position first. You want to put a capo on fret 5 or fret 6 or fret 7 and learn them there first. Okay, we have guitar teachers Expect beginners, the four, expect four fingers of a beginner to do something that even one beginner finger can't even do yet. They expect four beginner fingers to do something that one beginner finger can't do. They expect four fingers to do something that two beginner fingers can't even do. If two can't do it, how can four of them do it? And they're asking four fingers to do something that three beginner fingers can't do. And then they're asking, and because the fingers can't finger the chords, they end up squeezing the chords. They're squeezing them, and they can try to hang on for dear life to their chords in open position. And it is just unnecessarily hard. Do not learn your chords chords in the open position first. So I just want to leave you with some chord learning references. The very first one, Guitar Principles by Jamie Andreas. Every guitar player should have this book. Every guitar player should have this video. And you can pick up Jamie's work from guitarprinciples.com. You can also grab a little course, a uh, little video course, Learn Guitar Chords, and it shows you in immense detail what we've been talking about in this video. How to walk into chords and how to walk, how to, how to walk in, in and out of chords. Crucial, crucial, and that is free. Then you, I recommend this change guitar chords. And this is going to show you how to walk into one chord and from there walk into the next chord, complete with pivots. It is all detail. It is one move at a time. And you can get it here, https colon forward slash forward slash apps dot facebook dot com forward slash what guitar chords forward slash. Then a really important part of guitar is being able to touch the chords, not just uh, squeeze the heck out of them, and not use too, not use more energy and force that you need. 
And you can find this uh, free video course here also, tinyurl.com forward slash slow walking, S-L-O walking. And then walking in and out of chords, although there's some of that happening in here, this is all this does. And you can get this from tinyurl.com forward slash chord walking, chord walking. So if there's one thing I just want you to get clear in this video is that despite what people say, and they're normally not guitar teachers, is that learning guitar chords is not easy. Learning guitar chords is not easy. Playing guitar chords once you've learned them is easy, right? But learning guitar chords before you can play them, that is not easy. And it is particularly not easy when your guitar teacher does not know what they are doing. When your guitar teacher just does what they have been taught, when your guitar teacher does what their guitar teacher did and their guitar teacher did before them. It's not easy when your teacher doesn't know what they're doing. It is not easy when you, when you do not know what you're doing because your teacher doesn't know, so you don't know. And if there's one thing that you should get from this clip is that the whole real uh, mindset that learning to finger chords is a complex process, complex process, complex process. Okay, it is not easy, it is not simple. It is a whole, it is a complex process. Nah, learning guitar chords is not hard though. It's not hard when your teacher knows what they are doing. When your teacher knows what they are doing, it is not hard. You just have to be patient. Learning guitar chords is not hard when you know what you are doing. That just needs patience. Guitar, learning guitar chords is not hard when you break a complex process down into simple steps. And learning guitar chords is not hard when you are patient mentally, emotionally and physically. When you are patient, learning guitar chords is not hard. Thank you for watching this video on first guitar chords. It's been my pleasure, Tara Edueta of guitarteacher.net.nz to present this to you. And we have been talking about why, when, how, and how not to learn guitar chords. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Good luck with your first guitar chords.